Hi everyone and welcome back to Vintage Digitals. So I bought this Seiko A557 from Etsy.com, paid $50 US plus shipping. It was advertised as needing a battery but I didn't put my faith in that. I love the condition, the images and it turned out to be as good in reality. Here I am with a watch. It also had the original bracelet and it had no stock buttons. I hoped it worked in direct sunlight but that wasn't happening and uh, when opening the watch because it didn't work in direct sunlight I was a bit worried that I might find a silver oxide cell that had leaked in there but to my surprise I actually found the original Maxell XR9527 power cell in there now these are rated at 2 volts and from my research they don't make them anymore I knew that it would be a hassle to find an original one and if I, even if I did, it would be as expensive as hell. I was happy that the watch was complete and it had no missing parts. My plan was to replace the Maxell power cell with the Panasonic MT920 and this is a modern type cell that is used in uh, some citizen watches, maybe also in some Seikos. The difference is that it's rated at 1.5 volts so a quarter smaller than the Maxell one, but theoretically it should work. Now before using the Panasonic one, I had to remove the conductive pad from the Maxell. I wasn't sure if it was soldered or not, I could see under the microscope two points, so I decided to take my chance with the screwdriver and with little to no force it popped right up. This conductive, this uh, pad was going to be used on the new battery, on the new power cell and uh, I wasn't going to solder it on because I didn't know what that heat could do to the power cell. Next step was to remove the module from the case. My advice is always test the module, make sure it works before you start doing any kind of work on the case you would end up with working four hours on the case and in the end the module wouldn't work. In my case I did know that the module was working as, a, as I applied 1.5 volts to it and it did light up. So I immediately started working on the case. Here you can see removing the buttons and as always the silver, the Seiko silver, silver waves have springs on their buttons and you can actually see the quality. Once they were removed, I knew they had to be cleaned and I didn't think that I could use the old gaskets as I assumed they were stiff and started to peel off, so I had to replace them. I didn't have the original type gaskets, the original ones were more like a tube, so I had to use three regular gaskets one after another on each of the buttons, so in total I had 12 gaskets just for the buttons. I also did clean the buttonholes to make sure there wasn't any gunk there that would impair pressing the buttons and since I was in that area I also made sure that there was no corrosion on the power cell connectors, they are the two connectors at the top of the watch and I also inspected that there was no corrosion on the connector to the front buttons the new O-rings fitted really nicely and uh, they didn't seem to be too tight or too loose and I'm sure that they provide enough ingress protection. I'm not going to take this out to sea or in the shower but I just like to make sure everything is protected. Putting back the retainers for the buttons is always tricky. You should do this under a microscope, I've done that under a microscope and you should do it by pressing it from one shot. If it pings across the room you will have a hard time finding it. Now that the case is complete, we can give it a final clean with some Windex. I have also added a new gasket to the back cover to make sure we have protection from all sides. And these are put aside under a glass dome just to make sure no dust gets in while I'm working on the module. Next, we start disassembling the module. Uh, it has a top plate held in place with four screws. It is a simple module uh, with very few parts. Now I did see some corrosion around the battery connection and I, made, I wanted to make sure I would get that off. 
and uh, also I inspected all the zebra strips. I was happy with them, they didn't have any corrosion on them or any dirt. I didn't end up removing the LCD because it was clean. Cleaning is done with isopropanol or, or with gas lighter fluid and you also have to use finger gloves just to make sure you don't get any fat from your fingers on the module. Do this under a microscope or under a loop just to make sure you get everywhere and that there are no places where uh, corrosion might hide. Reassembling the module is pretty straightforward. I always recommend that you use a manual just so you make sure the parts are assembled in the correct manner. You may end up putting them upside down. In this case the module is, since it's simple, you don't really need a manual only if you don't have uh, enough confidence. The top plate is put directly on the PCB because the PCB has uh, protection glued to it, so that's not a loose part. In the end, just make sure that you align the zebra strip on the front. This is a fault area. If this isn't aligned properly, you will end up with the front buttons not working. Now the power cells are similar, but only in diameter. They are actually very different in thickness. The max cell, the original one, is quite a bit, and this is visible with the naked eye, it's thicker. Now, to get aside this, I made some uh, circles from paper tape that I was going to glue on top of the Panasonic. This is okay because I'm not going... The watch doesn't have any pads to pick up voltage from the top of the battery where the, where the plus is. The plus is actually collected from the side. And now, even if you don't have a battery inside, you can see that the watch actually works if you keep it in direct sunlight, here it's facing towards my window, but if I run my finger in front of it, you will see that it immediately dies out. The purpose of the cell is of course to have somewhere to store that energy so the watch works even if it's not in sunlight. It's basically like a capacitor, I believe it's even called a capacitor cell. You can see it works, it flashes so showing low voltage, now, if I put my finger in front of the watch, in, uh, sorry, in front of the uh, solar panel, you will see that it will not die out, but it will continue flashing. And what a watch it is. Now, if you do use the micro light, you will see that the display will die out for a bit. I'm not going to keep it pressed to see if it loses time. If you just press it for a couple of seconds, it won't lose the time. I'm not going to put a regular battery inside just to be close as possible to the original. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.